My name is Rena Rossi. I'm a program officer with the Minnesota State Arts Board. I'm going to start by talking briefly about the Arts Board. I'm a program officer, as I said before there. We do have five program officers and about 20 staff people total. Our vision is that all Minnesotans have the opportunity to participate in the arts. We have programs that are open to individual artists, arts organizations, social service agencies, local units of government, and schools. What I heard when we went around the room was mostly individual artists, arts organizations, not a lot of schools or social service agencies. So hopefully you all can help tell folks in your lives who represent those sectors about these opportunities. In Minnesota, we have the great fortune in 2008, the voters of Minnesota passed the Arts and Cultural Heritage Amendment into the Constitution. Are you all familiar with this logo? This means that three-eighths of one percent of sales tax goes to a fund that goes to clean water, outdoor heritage, parks and trails, and the arts. And because of that, we have the most arts funding per capita of any state in the country. So that's pretty exciting. A portion of that sales tax fund every year goes to the arts board. A portion of that gets divvied and distributed out to the regional arts councils. And so there's grant programs available only to people in your region, and then there's grant programs available statewide. We have different ways of working together, and we have some opportunities that we fund that maybe the Regional Arts Council doesn't, and vice versa. First, a little bit about our process. So if you were to apply to the Arts Board for funding, the first thing you would do is look at the application materials and gather all the materials you need to submit an application. Once the application is submitted, all of our grants are reviewed by a volunteer citizen panel made up of uh, people from around Minnesota with expertise in the area of the program. So for example, if it was a festival support application, it would be people with expertise in festivals. The panel will review the application they will score and then their scores will be submitted to the board for approval. Once the board approves the panel's recommendations, the applicant is notified and then you can start your project. There is usually a, a couple months in between the time that the board would approve the grants and you could start your project. So on our calendar page, you can see all the timelines. We do have one deadline a year for each of our programs and then usually the project period is a year, although there are also are some exceptions which I will talk about. For our panel review process, I think when you signed in you maybe noticed that there's a box you can check on the sign-in sheet if you're interested in serving on a panel. Those do take place in our office in St. Paul. They're usually two days, sometimes one, but most often two days. But it's a really good way to both help decide what will be funded in a given round and also to learn about what's going on around the state, meet colleagues, and help yourself learn about the grant writing process if it's something that might be more new to you. So I do encourage you to consider that. Here are our 11 programs and as you can see they're open to different constituencies. So some programs are only open to artists, some are only open to arts organizations, some are only open to human service organizations. It depends on the program. If you did pick up one of these brochures on the inside we have these programs here too, so if you want to kind of circle things and take notes, they are marked by an A for programs that individuals can apply to and an O for organizations. So I'm going to go through each of the programs and then uh, we'll talk, we can take questions on them. But operating support, uh, this is a program for organizations, arts organizations specifically. You do have to have a annual operating expenses of 166,000 averaged over two years to be eligible to apply. Um, this program is a four-year award and it provides general operating support for the organization. The amount varies based on the organizational budget, the amount of funding for the program in a given year, the organization scores in the panel process and, and other factors. Uh, the deadline for this year will be January 19th of 2018. And for each of these, I'm going to give you an example of a, a recipient. Center for the Arts in Fergus Falls is an example of an operating support recipient. The percent for art program, 
Whenever there is a uh, renovation of a building owned by the state, in that process it is possible to bond in some money for a public art installation as part of that process. And then what we do is when that's happening and there's going to be a public art installation, we send out an RFP to artists who might be interested in designing something for that project. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up for our newsletter and get those notices for when those uh, bids are open. Watch for announcements, this doesn't happen on a calendar. And we can, an example, um, this I believe is in St. Cloud, and this is an example of, I think it's at St. Cloud State, um, a public art project that was funded in this program um, by Janet Lofquist. Partners in Arts Participation, this is a program that I need you all to go tell people about because I don't think I heard any health and human service organizations in the room tonight. So this is a program for health and human service organizations who want to bring uh, arts opportunities uh, for their clients to participate in. The grant range is five to 25,000 and the deadline will be in August of 2018. There is not a cash match required. The um, so organizations can get up to $25,000 to, to do those activities. Family Means in Stillwater had an artist come in and work with participants on uh, making talking suitcases of really important moments in your life um, for all their clients. And so this is an example of a, a trip to the Swiss Alps that one of the, um, the participants felt was an important life moment. Community arts education support. This is for community arts schools and conservatories where the, most of your programming is uh, arts related instruction and classes. It's a two year award and there is a budget threshold. I'm not remembering what it is off, off the top of my head right now, but there is a budget threshold for this program and it supports in a way an, an operating support grant for community arts schools and conservatories. Next deadline will be in July of 2018. And uh, Great River Arts Association in Little Falls is an example of a recipient of this grant. Arts access. So those of you who are in the room representing arts organizations, uh, this program exists to help you reach underserved groups and identify the barriers that are in place to reaching those groups and implement strategies to overcome those barriers. So in, a, in part, if there's a group you wish to reach but you're not sure what the barrier is, some of that um, conversation can, and, and learning can happen throughout the course of the grant. Um, these are five to 100,000. Again, it's open to arts organizations. Uh, there is a cash match, so uh, let me explain. This is our first example of a cash match. Let me explain how those work. So when there's a cash match, um, let's say your project was going to cost $10,000. Um, you would be able to request up to 9,000 from the Arts Board and the other 1,000 would need to come from another source. It can't be the Lakes Region Arts Council. You, it, uh, the one thing you can't use as a cash match is Regional Arts Council funding. Um, and it also can't be in kind, so it does have to be cash. It could be something like maybe you'll have a final event and you'll charge for tickets. Uh, maybe you have some money saved in the bank that you could put towards this, uh, but it does have to be actually cash. Uh, so we can go on, oh, June, 20, uh, June 22nd is the deadline. Let me give you an example from Duluth. So the Duluth Playhouse was a recipient of Arts Access and they wanted to, there was an organization serving youth with autism um, nearby and they wanted to work with those youth and their young actors to co-produce um, and do some theater workshops and that was their project. All right, Artist Initiative. For those of you in the room who are individual artists, this is our program for individual artists who are looking to cross a barrier to go to the next stage in your career. These grants support your artistic development. For some people, that means they need to get a peer review. For some people, that means they need to study with a certain person. Um, for some people, that means they need time to create a body of work and seek out publishers for it. Um, for some people, that means they need to make an, an album. So whatever that thing is for you, um, you would want to identify where are you now, where are you going, and what is in the way. And how is this project going to help uh, cross the barrier of what is in the way to get you to that next place. Um, these are two to $10,000. There is no uh, cash match required. 
There is a limit on how much you can use on equipment in all of our programs, and that's true in this program as well. So no more than $4,999 can be used on equipment. There's multiple deadlines depending on your discipline. So literary and performing arts is in May, visual arts is in June um, of 2018. A couple examples, uh, Christine Monroe in Duluth wanted to complete uh, a book of drawings. I think it was a children's book, so she was working on finishing that body of work. And Janet Olney in Wilmer was working on learning how to work with gourds and making large-scale tapestries for her project. Arts learning. This program is relevant to schools, but it's also relevant to teaching artists. It's also relevant in after school and out of school time and also in community arts classes. So this is a program for helping lifelong learners acquire knowledge in the arts. It's a large range. There again is a cash match of 10%. The deadline is in February and then the program period falls with the school year. So you would be able to start in September of 2018. Annette Lee, this is an example of a community arts learning project where uh, Annette worked with a couple other native artist instructors to teach both painting, sculpture, carving to community members and then uh, community members created work centered around their relationship to the stars. That was the theme in the classes. And actually they did a really um, wonderful exhibition afterwards with both the professional artist work and the community artist work, which is very lovely. Arts Tour Minnesota. This program is pretty self-explanatory. It's for touring around the state, but primarily uh, what we hope this program will accomplish is that audiences in all over the state will be able to have access to art that they couldn't access otherwise in their home community. Presenting organizations and venues can apply to bring different arts experiences to their home community and Minnesota artists can also apply to take their work to other communities. This is ten to $150,000. Cash matches 25% in this program, um, and the deadline is July 13th. This program does have a long timeline, so you would apply in July of 2018, and then you could start your activities in June of 2019. So it's a pretty long time period for this. Uh, so you're able to plan, get your tour sites lined up, and then start the project about a year after you apply. The Cheryl Nelson Lossett Performing Arts Series in Moorhead is an example of a recent grantee in this program. Um, they applied as a presenting organization to bring in a series of different music and dance for audiences in the Moorhead area. Cultural Community Partnership. This is very similar to Artist Initiative, but it's open to artists of color. It's a partnership between either an artist of color and another artist of color, or an artist of color and an organization. Um, it works very similarly to Artists Initiative in that uh, it's for artists to figure out what the barrier is to moving to the next step in their career. Uh, 1,000 to 8,000 is the grant range, and those will be due in September. An example of a project here was Harry Waters Jr. did a partnership with the Franconia Sculpture Park to present a newly staged version of The Tempest. A couple more, so folk and traditional arts. This program is open to a very wide range of, of applicants, uh, individuals, organizations, schools, different types of organizations. Uh, this is to support the artistic traditions that are rooted in and reflective of cultural communities. Folk is a little bit of a misnomer. What we're looking at is not necessarily what a lot of people might think of as folk art, but it's traditional arts. So um, things that are rooted in a community that shares a common language, ethnicity, tribal affiliation, uh, occupation, or geographic region. These are five to $75,000 grants, 25% match. They will be due in May of 2018. I'll give you a couple examples. Delina White from Deer River was funded in this program to do a very exciting project where uh, her and her daughters made a new collection of skirts that told the story of different uh, materials arriving into Woodland Tribal region and when they arrived and what significance those materials had. And that was all told through skirts that they made uh, and then did a fashion show of around the state. And one other example, uh, the Somali Museum in, in Minneapolis was awarded to do a Somali weaving circle where both Somali and non-Somali participants could come learn to finger weave. 
And I think this is our last one. So Minnesota Festival Support. Again, very self-explanatory. It's for festivals. <laughs> the applicant can be an arts festival or a community festival that's going to start or already has an arts component. The purpose is to engage Minnesotans in arts experiences through festivals. Grant range is five to 75,000, 25% cash match. The deadline will be in March. One thing about this program is that you do have to have already uh, had the festival at least one time before you apply. We do not fund new festivals. I do recommend that, um, I think it, it's, a, it's a competitive statewide program, so I do recommend a couple years of experience with your festival before applying. An example of a recipient is the Grand Marais Art Fair, which has, I can't remember quite how many, but it's quite a lot of artists that um, are invited to Grand Marais, or some are already from there, and they attract a really large audience to get to meet these artists and, and purchase work. All right, so how to do all of this, if you're interested? You go to our website, that's the first stop. You can select grants for either artists or organizations, depending on what you're interested in. Go to the grant program you want, and learn more about it by reading the program overview. The next step, if you're a first time applicant, call your program officer. We wanna to talk to you. I'm gonna show you through our website a little bit here. So here's where you would select grants. And then after you do that, uh, you will get this option, organizations or artists. Let's say you selected artists. Okay, here's arts learning. You're interested in that. You're gonna click on arts learning. Then you'll get to this page the program overview and instructions is the most important first step. So click on that. It's a PDF read through the guidelines to learn about eligibility, review criteria, rules of the program. Then other things you can look at on that site are sample applications. You can look at applications that other people have written and that, that were funded. <laughs> Um, you can also look at, uh, we have a webinar, an hour-long webinar we do on each of the grant programs that dives deep into that grant program. So if you miss it, those are always on there afterwards until the program the deadline approaches. So you can watch them at any time. Um, we also have summaries of previously awarded grants so you can get an idea of what's being funded in that program. And then we have the program officer's information. All of our Grant applications are done online. Once you read the instructions and you are ready to apply, you will get a username and log into Web Grants, which is our online grants portal. This is just what your login screen will look like. If you are new, you can go to register here and we will get you a login. It takes one to two business days to do that, so you want to plan ahead. Once you're in Web Grants, I, I recommend, you know, if you're thinking about applying, you're always welcome to go get a username, go on Web Grants, poke around, fill things out. If you don't finish, no problem. If you don't end up submitting it, no problem. But just get used to the system. It, it has, um, you know, sometimes it can take a little while to figure out how to navigate in there. So don't uh, neglect to put time for that into your timeline. If you're not on our e-news already, uh, that is one good way to find out about when our deadlines are going to be. We will always email you when a program opens for application. So you can sign up back there, or you can go to the bottom of our website and sign up for the e-news. We won't give you too many emails. Uh, hopefully you won't feel overwhelmed. These are our, the program officers. So as I mentioned, call the program officer if you have questions. We can read drafts of your application. Uh, we want to support you. So call us. These, uh, these five people, so we each have a couple programs in our portfolio. Sherry is the Program Officer for Artist Initiative and Cultural Community Partnership. Richard is the Program Officer for Community Arts Education Support and Operating Support. Uh, Natalie is Arts Learning, Arts Access, and Partners in Arts. I am Arts Tour, Festival Support, and Folk and Traditional. Um, and then Ben does the Percent for Art programs. And please don't hesitate to give us a call.